Rapunzel, from the Tales of the Brothers Grimm. There were once a man and a woman who wished very much to have a little child. Now these people had a small window in their cottage which looked out into a beautiful garden full of the most lovely flowers and vegetables. There was a high wall round it, but even had there not been, no one would have entered into the garden because it belonged to a sorceress whose power was so great that everyone feared her. One day the woman stood at the window looking into the garden, and she saw a bed which was planted full of the most beautiful lettuces, and as she looked at them she began to wish she had some to eat, but she could not ask for them. Day after day her wish for these lettuces grew stronger, and the knowledge that she could not get them so worried her that at last she became so pale and thin that her husband was quite alarmed. "'What is the matter with you, dear wife?' he said one day. "'Ah, if I do not have some of that nice lettuce which grows in the garden behind our house, I feel that I shall die.' The husband, who loved his wife dearly, said to himself, "'Rather than my wife should die, I will get some of this lettuce for her, cost what it may.' So in the evening twilight he climbed over the wall into the garden of the witch, hastily gathered a handful of the lettuces, and brought them to his wife. She made it into a salad and ate it with great eagerness. It pleased her so much and tasted so good that after two or three days had passed, she gave her husband no rest till he promised to get her some more. So again in the evening twilight he climbed the wall, but as he slid down into the garden on the other side he was terribly alarmed at seeing the witch standing near him. How came you here? she said with a fierce look. You have climbed over the wall into my garden like a thief and stolen my lettuces. You shall pay dearly for this. Ah, replied the poor man, let me entreat for mercy. I have only taken it in a case of extreme need. My wife has seen your lettuces from her window and she wished for them so much that she said she should die if she could not have some of them to eat. Then the witch's anger cooled a little, and she replied, If what you tell me is true, then I will give you full permission to take as many lettuces as you like, on one condition. You must give up to me the child which your wife may bring into the world. I will be very kind to it, and be as careful of it as a mother would be. The husband, in his alarm, promised everything the witch asked, and took away with him as many lettuces as his wife wanted. Not many weeks after this, the wife became the mother of a beautiful little girl, and in a short time the witch appeared and claimed her, according to the husband's promise. Thus they were obliged to give up the child, which she took away with her directly, and gave her the name of Rapunzel, after the name of the vegetable which grew in the garden. Rapunzel was the most beautiful child under the sun, and as soon as she reached the age of twelve years, the witch locked her up in a tower that stood in a forest and this tower had no steps, nor any entrance, excepting a little window. When the witch wished to visit Rapunzel, she would place herself under this little window and sing, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair, that I may climb without a stair. Rapunzel had most long and beautiful hair like spun gold, and when she heard the voice of the witch, she would unbind her golden locks and let them fall loose over the window sill, from which they hung down to such a length that the witch could draw herself up by them into the tower. Two years passed in this manner, when it happened one day that the king's son rode through the forest. While passing near the tower he heard such a lovely song, and could not help stopping to listen. It was Rapunzel who tried to lighten her solitude by the sound of her own sweet voice. The king's son was very eager to obtain a glimpse of the singer, but he sought in vain for a door to the tower. There was not one to be found. So he rode home, but the song had made such an impression on his heart that he went daily into the forest to listen. Once, while he stood behind a tree, he saw the witch approach the tower and heard her say, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair, that I may climb instead of a stair. 
Presently, he saw a quantity of long golden hair hanging down low over the windowsill, and the witch climbing up by it. Oh, said the young prince, if that is the ladder on which persons can mount and enter, I will take the first opportunity of trying my luck that way. So on the following day, as it began to grow dark, he placed himself under the window and cried, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair, that I may climb instead of a stair. Immediately the hair fell over the window, and the young prince quickly climbed up and entered the room where the young maiden lived. Rapunzel was dreadfully frightened at seeing a strange man come into the room through the window, but the king's son looked at her with such friendly eyes and began to converse with her so kindly that she soon lost all fear. He told her that he had heard her singing, and that her song had excited such deep emotion in his heart that he could not rest till he had seen her. On hearing this, Rapunzel ceased to fear him, and they talked together for some time, till at length the prince asked her if she would take him for a husband. For a time she hesitated, although she saw that he was young and handsome and he had told her he was a prince. At last she said to herself, He will certainly love me better than old mother Gretel does. So she placed her hand in his and said, I would willingly go with you and be your wife, but I do not know in the least how to get away from this place. Unless, she said after a pause, you will bring me every day some strong silken cord. Then I will weave a ladder of it, and when it is finished I will descend upon it, and you shall take me away on your horse. The prince readily agreed to this, and promised to come and see her every evening till the ladder was finished, for the old witch always came in the daytime. The witch had never seen the prince. She knew nothing of his visits, till one day Rapunzel said innocently, I shall not have such a heavy weight as you to draw up much longer, Mother Gretel, for the king's son is coming very soon to fetch me away. You wicked child, cried the witch. What do I hear you say? I thought I had hidden you from all the world, and now you have betrayed me. In her wrath, she caught hold of Rapunzel's beautiful hair and struck her several times with her left hand. Then she seized a pair of scissors and cut Rapunzel's hair, while the beautiful locks, glistening like gold, fell on the ground. And she was so hard-hearted after this that she dragged poor Rapunzel out into the forest to a wild and desert place and left her there in sorrow and woe. On the same day on which the poor maiden had been exiled, the witch tied the locks of hair which she had cut off poor Rapunzel's golden head into a kind of tail and hung it over the window sill. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair that I may climb without a stair. Then the witch let the hair down, and the king's son climbed up. But at the open window he found not his dear Rapunzel, but a wicked witch, who looked at him with cruel and malicious eyes. Ah, she cried with a sneer, you are come to fetch your loving bride, I suppose, for the beautiful bird has flown from the nest and will never sing any more. The cat has fetched it away, and she intends to scratch your eyes out also to thee is rapunzel lost thou wilt never behold her again the prince felt almost out of his mind with grief as he heard this and in his despair he sprang out of the tower and fell among the thorns and brambles beneath he certainly escaped with his life but the thorns struck into his eyes and blinded them after this he wandered about the woods for days eating only wild roots and berries and did nothing but lament and weep for the loss of his beloved bride. So he wandered for a whole year in misery, till at last he came upon the desert place where Rapunzel had been banished, and lived in her sorrow. As he drew near, he heard a voice which he seemed to recognize, and advancing towards the sound came within sight of Rapunzel, who recognized him at once with tears. Two of her tears fell in his eyes, and so healed and cleared them of the injury done him by the thorns that he could soon see as well as ever. Then he traveled with her to his kingdom, and she became his wife, and the remainder of their days were spent in happiness and content. The End